So what do I do when I get bored? Hmm. I know, I'll build a mini ITX gaming rig. Now the point here is not to build a hardcore gaming rig. The specs on these items are absolutely not top of the line. In fact, I could just buy a pre-built desktop, like an older HP or Dell desktop. But there are a few disadvantages going that route. For starters, exchanging items from a pre-built machine can be mostly narrowed down to simple things like RAM modules and the hard drive. My intention was to cram all of this stuff inside a tiny housing, as tiny as possible, but with enough space to cram in those exotic options. This is a Silverstone SG13. It is tiny and I've fallen for a simple form factor. Enough air intakes on the sides and I'm fond of the ribbing effect on the top. Next up is the ASRock H310CM HDV. Great name. I have no idea what in the hell it all stands for. It's a rather simple board, but has all my needed necessities. It's got a PCIe slot for that graphics card, two DDR4 RAM module slots, four SATA connections, and a LGA1151 socket. I opted for an i3-8300 purely because I could get it on the cheap. It's no powerhouse, but for playing games up to the year 2015, it's a reasonable choice. Now when it comes to a more exotic choice instead of a pre-built, this is a Corsair H45, an all-in-one cooler that is frequently used in combination with this ITX mini case. It's cheap, it fits, and I didn't want to place that stock Intel CPU fan that came with the i3 CPU in such a small space. Although this item has been neatly repackaged, you can clearly see that this is a second-hand item. The pre-installed thermal paste is gone, and the bracket that needs to be placed on the backside of the motherboard looks like someone scraped it across its anus. No worries, as long as it all works, I am fine with that. Another item is this DDR4 RAM module. Simple and effective are these Corsair Value Select 4GB RAM modules. I say these because I ordered two of them, but one arrived a day later. This GeForce GT710 is a simple and effective choice for the gaming era I was talking about. It's affordable and does the job well. Here's another known item. An HP 120GB SSD. There's no need to bring out the big guns, because the intended OS in games don't even come near the 120GB volume. And the last item on the list is this Silverstone ES230 Strider Essential. It has an even longer model name, but it's way over the top to pronounce. So, let's get started by dismantling the case as much as needed to work in it. On the to-do list is installing the CPU in its socket and also slapping thermal paste on it. I did run out of thermal paste because I've been doing all these desktop projects, but luckily I had a sachet left over from the previous build. Now to install that ass-clenched CPU cooler bracket. I did need to think here for a second. The manual is really weird in this graphic art. It's all flat, not 3D, but the black iron holder comes on top of the CPU cooling unit. Time to dismantle the top lid from the case to make some room and extra workspace. I also dismantled the 120mm fan from the cooler to temporarily gain more space in the case to work with. Click in that I.O. plate and I ran into a tiny problem. The side of the cooler would interfere with the SATA ports on the motherboard below. So I had to dismantle the CPU cooler from the motherboard and flip it to the other way around so the SATA ports were accessible to insert cables in. I screwed in that motherboard after I finalized my plan. In order to install that cooler unit, I had to remove the front panel to access the mounting holes. I lined up that cooling unit, but before running into another future problem, I tackled it. If I installed the cooling unit first, I wouldn't be able to access those SATA ports because all of that tight space. It was time to screw in that cooling unit, but the road to making this one permanently tight was a bumpy one, as you will see. I placed back that cooling fan. Time to reinsert that RAM module that I removed to make some extra workspace. Now all these cables from the front panel need to be tucked back inside the case and end up on the side to connect later on to the motherboard. And I screwed down the front panel, made some room for the graphics card, installing it and tightening it down. Now here we go. This is the moment the problems started. The hard drive was supposed to go underneath the cooling unit. I tried cheating it a bit by sliding it underneath, but uh, a hard drive isn't that flexible. I had to remove the front panel again, as well as the cooling unit, by putting the case on its back and screwing it down with four holes on the bottom. It's a very odd placement, and made me wonder how you would even install a second hard drive in here. Trying to connect that L-type SATA cable again was not going to work anymore, with that SSD drive in the way, so I pulled out a flat-ended on both ends one, so far, it was looking good. 
Before I was going to install that power brick in here, which would limit that working space to zero, I attached all the present cables to the motherboard. This case requires a power brick that is smaller than 15 cm in length or 6 inches to make it all fit. The Silverstone case is very specific in its measurements and I couldn't find a warehouse deal on a modular brick with that length. So here we are with this shitload of cables that for 70% will be unused. But before I got to that part, I did some simple cable management. Once that power brick got in there, there was no turning back when it comes to any management. I clicked in the necessary cables into the motherboard and then I got him fucking me in. I forgot that the SSD needs a power cable on a power brick as well. Meaning I had to remove the front panel and the water cooling unit for the many of time in order to gain access to the SSD. Now I close it all up and I could smack myself in the face. The SATA cable was on the outside of the case and not like the rest on the inside. So fucking hell. And I could finally screw down that power brick in its place. I was thinking about the best plan to get rid of these unused power cables. I did some cable management on them and found that the best place was on top of the cooling unit. It's like that space was just made for that specific reason. Now weird thing is that I saw some pictures beforehand online with builds just letting those cables run wild inside the case. I think this space was intended by Silverstone to jam that shit in here. Especially since you can place a panel back on there and the cables are tight in that particular space. The case was getting very cramped but there was just enough space to fit in that graphics card. And this is the final result. I do have to say that cable management is very, very sparse in this case. The intended goal was to make enough room for proper airflow and not getting those cables cluttered all over the place. A day later, that second RAM module arrived. Seeing all the work I had to do, I didn't want to dismantle the whole case again. So I did manage, thanks to proper cable management, to easily reach that second RAM module slot. Now the real test. Let's find out. Yeah, that's the first thing I heard. I immediately had negative flashbacks to that shitty fan on that other Windows XP PC that I replaced. But I figured it out real fast. One of the cables inside the case was scraping the 120mm fan just a little bit, resulting in that annoying noise. I tie wrapped it safely out of the way and... Now it's dead silent. The only fans spinning are that 120mm fan and a power brick one. Let's head over to the software side. It gives the ASRock image. And this looks good. These past few months I've been staring at these older Megatrans MS-DOS looking BIOSes. So this is refreshing. It recognizes all its components perfectly. From the CPU to RAM towards the SSD. I do want to set the fan at the lowest setting. Because I don't want to hear anything. I want this bitch quiet as fuck when I'm gaming. Now I did have some problems installing an OS on this which ultimately resulted in this screen that I have never seen before in my life. I like this. It reminds me of early DOS games where numeric and alphabetic characters were the protagonist and antagonist. Eventually, I managed to install Windows 10. I am skipping all of this boring crap. Basically, it's just a fresh install and getting those drivers in place. What I didn't understand at first was how the heck this CPU was running almost at 100 degrees, even in idle state. I pulled over the cabinet and saw that I forgot to connect a plug that makes the water cooling unit activate instead of only the fan. And now it runs at 30 degrees at all times, even when doing some hardcore gaming, which is absolute nice. Seeing that this ITX rig is prime use cases gaming, I went for two other warehouse deals. This is a 8-bit Dove SN30 Pro Plus, not the newer version, but I got this one very cheap. Another item I got is this Rocat Kane 202 RGB gaming mouse because I don't want to switch and insert one mouse dongle into different PCs. So the moment you've all been waiting for, how does it fare with games? Here are some test runs. Put UAV or eye in the sky to ID those artillery pieces. You can control it from your crosscom or from your tactical map. Standing by for your targeting coordinates, Captain. I 
I do have to say that the game performance is a bit over the place. The problem here is that that GPU is capable enough to run some mid-2000 games, but going towards 2012 gaming, the GPU has a hard time. I might solve this in the near future. If I can get my hands on something like a NVIDIA 900 series GPU. So am I happy with this mini ITX gaming rig? Well, yeah. It wasn't really what I was expecting. Some positive, some negative. The rig is fine for some mid-2000 3D gaming, but with a new GPU, it will perform even better than expected. And that's what I'm aiming for. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this going in blank and see what the hell comes out of it video. If so, there are other videos in the playlist that are similar, where I build or upgrade desktop rigs, and some get a refurbishment treatment. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to keep updated. And I will see you on a next tech video.